Hello, welcome to lesson 36, Access Modifiers, part 2, brought to you by Ankpro Technologies. My name is Harish. Okay. In this session, we are going to learn the rest to access modifiers. They are internal and protected internal. But in the previous session, we just covered the first three. They are private, public and protected. Right now, we'll explore the rest two. They are internal and protected internal. Okay. Internal and protected internal. Coming to first internal, a member with internal access modifier is available anywhere within the containing assembly. Okay. We will get a compile time error if we try to access an internal member from outside the containing assembly. Guys, you can make a note here, uh, in the two sentences, not only in this two sentences, in the protected internal also, we can find a word called assembly, assembly and here also. Now, before understanding this internal and protected internal, we will understand what assembly is. Okay, to understand what assembly is, I'm having a slide for that. Assembly in .NET. In .NET world, if we compile a project and assembly is generated. Okay, in .NET assemblies are of two types. They are executable file and the DLL. Okay, when is executable file generated and when is DLL generated? If you if you use a console application or a Windows application, uh, when you build the project, you'll get an exe file. And if you use a build web application or uh, you'll use a class library, then when you compile the project or build the project, you'll get a DLL, that is dynamic link library. And what, if, what first of all, what is assembly? Assembly contains an intermediate language, that is IL or MSIL, Microsoft Intermediate Language of project source code. Okay, now we just understood what an assembly is. Now without wasting time we'll jump back into previous slide and uh, and understand what is internal and protected internal access modifiers okay coming to internal a member with internal access modifier is available anywhere within the containing assembly the meaning of this sentence is you are having a class and in that class you are having a member which is having the access modifier as internal and that member is accessible anywhere within that assembly completely Okay, to understand that clearly, what we'll do is we'll just fire up Visual Studio and here what we'll do is we'll first ask, understand what assembly is. Okay, now I'm having, I'm already created a console application which is my solution name is modify demo and what I'll do is I'll just build this project first. Now in the slides we saw, in the slide we saw right, that is Assembly in .NET consists of two types. In .NET, in .NET, assemblies are of two types. Mainly they are executable file and the DLL. Now, in my project, what we have done is, I have chosen a console application. Since we have chosen a console application, the assembly generated will be of a executable file. Now, if you want to see it manually, how to, how to check it out. Uh, right click on your project and open folder in Fire Explorer. Then navigate to bin and debug you can see here the modifier demo.exe since we are using a console application the assembly generated is of type uh, the executable file okay now we'll jump back into visual studio and now we'll see how uh, how to get an dll assembly okay as we saw in the slide if you want uh, if you are using a web application or a class library we'll get a dll okay as of now what we'll do is to our project we'll add an assembly which will generate a DLL file. Okay. Instead of using a web application, what we'll do is we'll add a class library and I'll name it as demo assembly one. Okay. My class library name is demo assembly one and what I'll do I'll add I'll first build this project. Okay, build has succeeded. What I'll do I'll navigate to this file and I'll open the bin and debug here you can observe guys demo assembly one dot DLL okay it's understood that if you're using the console application Windows applications okay then the output or a DLL generated is of executable file and if you're building a console application sorry web application or a class library then the assembly generated is of type DLL that is dynamic link library okay coming back to presentation coming back to Visual Studio here to understand what is internal and protected internal, I would like to add another assembly, that is another project, which generates an DLL assembly. So I'll generate, a cla I'll take class library, then I'll name it as uh, demo assembly 2. Okay, this is my demo assembly 2. Now I'll build this project. 
Similarly, this also will generate a DLL. If you go to File Explorer and if you navigate to bin, then debug, you can observe demo assembly.dll. Okay, this is what we learned. Okay. Now we have now we are having a clear cut idea of what assembly is and based on the respective applications we choose. Uh, uh, .NET gives us the two types of assemblies that is an exe file or a dll okay now what we'll do is we'll jump back into presentation and we'll see what is internal and protected internal internal a member with internal access modifier is available anywhere within the containing assembly so to understand that we'll jump into visual studio what i'll do is i'll name it as name my class as assembly assembly one class one okay here what I'll do is I'll just created I'll just create a member which is having access modifier as internal internal int ID equals one out one okay now what did I do I just created a class and in this class I'm I'm creating a member with the access modifier as internal and I'm assigning a value to it okay to to cross verify this sentence that is member with internal access modifier is available anywhere within the containing assembly it means that we are having a member id which is having access modifier as internal and this member this member keep in mind is accessible throughout this assembly demo one assembly okay S sorry okay that member is accessible sorry i just made a mistake it's okay now well, i'm in the project demo assembly 2 okay now this member internal int id this ID member is accessible throughout this demo assembly too. Okay. Now, to cross verify, what we'll do is we'll just create a, another class, public class assembly two class two. Okay. Sorry, this is assembly one itself, but class name I have changed. That's all. Here I'll I would like to have a met method public void its print method. Now in this method, I would like to create an object of assembly one class one, and I will use my object as a, then new. Okay, now if I use a dot, you can observe ID is available here. Okay, this is what this is what. Sorry, I have to print that, so it's throwing me error. Right, quickly a dot. I can access this. Okay, now when I build this project, first I have to set it my set it as my console application. Let us start a project, and can observe now when I build this project, the build got succeeded. It means that you are creating an internal member, okay, and this member is accessible throughout this assembly that is demo assembly two. Wherever you call in this demo assembly two, this member, this ID member, is accessible throughout that assembly. That is the meaning of that sentence, okay. And we will get a compile time. Sorry, we will get a compile time error if we try to access an internal member from outside the containing assembly it means that I'm having this internal member in this demo assembly 2 and if I try to access this ID member in the demo assembly 1 it will throw us compile time error to cross verify it what I'll do is I'll jump into class 1 of demo assembly 1 and here I'll name it as I'll rename the class like assembly 2 class 1 what I'll do, I'll just create a class like public, public, sorry, uh, void print. Okay, now if here, if I try to access, if I try to access this int ID, that is internal ID in my class, in my demo assembly one, it is not possible. Okay, it will throw us compile time error, but uh, what we'll do is we'll just copy this class name and we'll try to create an object uh, in the demo assembly one. Okay, when I try to do this and when I create an object like AO and new assembly one, it is telling that 
when I over on this, it is telling that you are missing a namespace for assembly one class one. Okay, now how to add the namespace? It's very simple. How to add the reference? Okay, since we are calling this class in the demo assembly one, we have to go to this reference and we have to add a reference for that. Okay, once my project loads, you can observe we are going to add a reference to the demo assembly one and from where we are going to give a reference for the class which is present in demo assembly 2 so I'll just click uncheck it and I'll add it you can observe here you can observe here in my demo assembly class references you can observe your demo assembly 2 reference is presented okay now when I over on this and when I click on that you can observe I can add assembly sorry namespace of demo assembly 2 okay now it's fine but uh, now when I use when I use my object and if I try to access that ID it's not available here why because why because it tells us that if your member is if your member is internal okay internal access modifier it's using internal access modifier and that member is available only within the assembly within that assembly and if you try to call that member in the other assembly if you add a reference also it's not possible and it will throw us a compile time error okay that is the meaning of that sentence if I assign a value here also it just throws when I build this project it throws error telling the compile time error telling that assembly one class one ID is inaccessible due to its protection level as if you are using an internal modifier and that member and this member is accessible only in this assembly and if you try to access in another assembly it will throw us a compile time error this is what the internal access modifier is okay coming back to presentation here the next access modifier let out is protected internal okay a member with protected internal modifier can be accessed by any code in the assembly in which it is declared and or from within the derived class in another assembly okay now what we'll do is we'll come back to this demo assembly too now I'm, I have declared a member with internal access modifier now to this I'll add protected okay if I add protected that one <coughs> you can observe here I did not get any uh, red squiggly means it's telling that if your member is protected and that member can be accessible in that assembly completely and also and also if you want to access this member in another assembly for example I'm having this demo assemb this member in the demo assembly too and if I want to access this demo this ID in my demo assembly one and it is possible how it's possible by just inheriting that assembly class one it's possible by inheriting this assembly class one okay now when I inherited this assembly class one and and I've created this assembly class one object also and now if I try to access that it's not available here okay instead of that what we have to use is we have to use a base keyword then I have to use see now this ID is available first of all where this ID is declared it's declared in demo assembly 2 but now I can access in demo assembly 1 also how it is possible it's possible by the concept of inheritance what did I do I just inherited this assembly 1 class 1 to my assembly 2 class 1 and what is the access modifier present here protected that is the advantage of protected access modifier so now you can observe here I should assign a value to it like 101 as yes, it's accessible this is the advantage of protected internal okay coming back here you can observe here a member with protected internal modifier can be accessed by any code in the assembly which it is declared or from within a derived class in another assembly and it is a protected internal is a combination of protected as well as internal also that's what we saw in the session in the session we learned what is internal modifier and protected internal okay Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Please subscribe to Ankro Training below.